everybody welcome back I'm Paul again you're watching Ada Zoysia and this week we're going to talk about fertilizer and fertilizer calculations how to determine how much nitrogen is in a bag and determine how much fertilizer to put down per thousand square feet once you've determined uh, the actual amount you want to put down we're going to figure out how to um, take that amount from the bag and calculate it to apply so we want to be good stewards of the environment so it's really important not to over apply and understand these processes um, and not waste money applying fertilizer that we don't need to apply um, at the end of this video I'm gonna link in the description an app that you can download that will help make these calculations easy without actually having to do paper math um, so when you're choosing a fertilizer you need to know what's already in your soil before you amend your soil with fertilizer now nitrogen is very volatile, which means um, it can fluctuate. The levels of it will fluctuate up and down depending on um, the, the environment around, temperature, rain, um, how much the plants are using up, that type of thing. But when you have high levels of phosphorus and potassium in your soil, you really don't want to um, apply more. All right, so when we talk about fertilizer, there are three numbers on the bag. And those three numbers are identified as N, P, and K. And those are nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. And when you think of NPK, you think of up, down, and all around. So your nitrogen is going to be your growth above ground, the gr greening up of the plant, the um, vertical growth um, above ground. And the P is your phosphorus, and that is down, which is everything below ground, your roots. And K is potassium, which is all around. And potassium is really good for environmental stresses um, like heat stress, disease, um, drought, those type things. It helps the plant uh, push through that. So a basic uh, rundown on what fertilizer is, is it is one or more plant nutrients that's essential to the growth of the plant. And when we think about it, there's two main types of fertilizer. There's a natural or organic fertilizer, and then there's a synthetic fertilizer. In my opinion, natural is better. Uh, you have so many more benefits in that it is a slow release fertilizer, meaning that the, um, the, the organic material or fertilizer is dependent upon microbi microbiology to break it down and put it back into a form that the plant can use so the byproduct of microbiology is fertilizer more fertile soil um, and completion of the uh, soil food web now when you apply a natural or organic fertilizer it's not going to burn I mean unless you severely overdo it it's probably just not going to burn again it's great for the microbiology which is your bacteria and fungi um, it potentially could be more expensive than a synthetic fertilizer, but it is also more sustainable. Um, typically, it's made from animal manure, green manure, compost, and when you add organic material to the soil, it increases your soil's capacity to retain moisture and nutrients. And if you remember, we've talked about CECs, the cat ion exchange capacity, which is the soil's ability to retain water or nutrients. So. Um, the particular fertilizer that I'm using this year is loaded with chicken litter and it's composted chicken litter which has sat on a pad and they let the um, let it get rained on whatever and, and decompose a little bit and wash some of the salts out of it because there's sodium in, in it naturally and um, what they do is they take that and they, they take hardwood biochar and they, they grind it up and they mix it into the manure and that biochar soaks in all of those um, uh, nutrients and, and all of that good stuff. And it, it kind of acts like a sponge in the soil. So anyway, we've talked about that before. So synthetic fertilizers are made from synthesized chemicals, right? Um, most of them don't contain micronutrients where your organic matter will contain it. Typically they're very fast release, but they can mitigate 
the uh, release speed by coating it in polymers and sulfur and um, all other kinds of chemicals and materials. Now, a synthetic synthetic fertilizer, um, since it releases so fast, it also leaches through the soil very fast. Um, it's bad for the environment. Uh, if you get a heavy rain, guess what happens? Is you have runoff. Um, if you have sandy soil and you get a handy, heavy rain, it's going to leach down below the root zone and be wasted. And a lot of this material you don't want getting into the um, groundwater and, and ditches and, and ponds and lakes and things like that. So um, think of it like this. Synthetics release very fast and give you a large hit all at once, right? And what's not used is just wasted away. Um, Organic material, on the other hand, goes in as organic matter. It stimulates microbes um, that feed on it. They break it down into plant nutrients, completing part of the soil food web, greatly improving the soil. Right, so we're going to talk about some N, P, and K calculations. And most fertilizers are chosen because of their nitrogen content. Some grasses like higher volumes of nitrogen, and some respond better to lower volumes of nitrogen. Let's break down the numbers so that uh, you may better understand how it's used. Now remember, N, P, and K. Each number is a percentage of what that element is in the bag. Uh, we need to turn the percentage into an actual number so we know how much to put on the lawn. Um, to calculate these numbers of nitrogen in a bag, we multiply the bag weight by the percentage of nitrogen in the bag. So what we're gonna do is right up here we're gonna put uh, let's hypothetically say we're using the X screen 818 50 pound bag which is what I buy um, so we're gonna take 50 times 0 0.08 so 0 0.08 is 8% 8% of a 50 pound bag is what we're trying to figure out well that math is pretty simple we know it's four pounds so that means there's four pounds of actual nitrogen in the bag all right so if I have a 20,000 square foot lawn, what we do is we say four pounds divided by 20. 0 0.02 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet is what I apply when I spoon feed, which is perfect for bi-weekly type spoon feeding. Let's look at some more examples. All right, so let's look at a generic 10, 10, 10. Let's just say it's a 50 pound bag. So, and we're, let's say we're gonna do 5,000 square feet. All right, so we take 50 times 0.1 or 0 0.10, and 50 times 0.1 is five pounds of nitrogen. So five pounds of nitrogen divided by five, which is 5,000 square feet of lawn, means that we're gonna put out one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet if we apply that entire bag to that 5,000 square feet. Let's look at another example. Carbon X Pro 2404 50 pound bag. So Nope, let's do, let's do the uh, DIY bag, 45 pound bag, right? So we take 45 times 0.24 and uh, that's 10.8 pounds of nitrogen in the bag. 10.8 pounds of nitrogen over 6,000 square feet, so 10.8 divided by six is 1.8 pounds of actual nitrogen going down per thousand square feet. Now that may be a little much for one application, but I'm just doing the math here. Now there's another method that we can use to determine, um, to calculate um, how much nitrogen you want to apply per thousand square feet. So let's say you want to apply a quarter pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet for your bi-weekly feeding. And let's use a 10, 10, 10 again. So we do 0.25, which is a quarter of a pound divided by 0 0.10, which is the percentage of nitrogen in the bag. And that comes out to be 2.5 pounds of fertilizer. You'll need 2.5 pounds of fertilizer, actual fertilizer, on each thousand square foot of grass. That's not 2.5 pounds of nitrogen, that's 2.5 pounds of the fertilizer in the bag. And we're gonna use another example here to help break down the math. Let's say we want to apply um, 0.4 pounds of nitrogen per thousand 
of the CX Pro 2404, right? So 0.4 divided by 0.24 equals 1.666 um, pounds of fertilizer per thousand to get 0.4 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. I hope that makes sense. All right, let's do one more. So let's say we're gonna apply, we want to apply one pound of nitrogen per thousand square feet. Um, let's say on a Bermuda lawn. Um, doesn't matter how often you do it. Let's just say we want to make a one pound of nitrogen application per thousand square feet. Let's say we're using a 4600 bag of fertilizer. Well, you got one divided by 0.46 and that means that you need to put out 2.17 pounds of fertilizer per thousand square feet. And that's how you figure out what you need. Now, another thing we can talk about is how much fertilizer do you actually need to apply for your type of grass? Well, in my case of zoysia grass, I like to come out heavy on my first application, which I used a 2404. I'm gonna wait three or four weeks, and then I'm gonna go with um, the 818. So I think my breakdown on the 2404 was 0.6 pounds of nitrogen per thousand square feet. And I'm gonna wait a while because that is a slow release. Um, all that organic matter in there, it takes time to break down and it slowly feeds, which is good. So once that starts to slow down a little bit, I'm gonna go in with a spoon feed of the X Green 818 and over my 20,000 square feet, that is 0.2 pounds of nitrogen every application. To make things easy, I'm gonna link in an app, or at least I'll put in where you can find it. Um, you can go to the App Store or the Google Play Store and do a search for Turf Therapy. It is an application that you can use to determine all of these calculations, and it works with granular and liquid and I think there's a lot of other features on there that I'm not real familiar with yet, and it's because I haven't really played with it. But Rob Palmer has a channel. Rob is the creator of the app. He also has a YouTube channel that is lawn and grass related. It's really good. He does some garden stuff too. I will link in his channel to the description. Make sure you check him out too. Give him a like and subscribe. And um, stay tuned next week for potentially some garden video information. I should be planting my garden by then. Thanks for tuning in. Have a great day. And I'll see you next week. We're going to walk around and look at this pitiful looking yard. Now I had a big POA outbreak this winter. And we did apply a trifloxy sulfuron. Uh, which is monument at the high rate and it did absolutely zero for it and the person that applied it told me that he thought it was uh, an old bottle anyway we just chalked it up to failure so I came out here with a shovel and I've been hand picking for a couple weeks now and I've pretty much eradicated it so saved a little bit of money by not having to buy it because it is expensive but the yard is paying the price you can look over here uh, over my shoulder and see some of the bare spots um, where I've had the shovel in there. I get a lot of winter die off and most of it is from the excess amount of water that my soil retains in the winter time. Just poor drainage, a lot of shade here. And um, I wanna give you an idea of what it's looking like now. This spot here is next to a giant oak tree and yeah, it's rock hard and nothing grows there, but it's slowly filling in. Um, we're going to take a look at some of these other areas here and let you see what it looks like now so that when you see it later, you can see how far it has come. It actually looks worse on camera than it is in person. Um, it only looks like it's 10% green on camera. In reality, it's 60 or 70% green. Um, I don't, I can't explain it. But back here, you can see where I'm putting my garden. I've got it tilled up. I've got my wood chips in my rows with um, boxes underneath it for weed suppression. I've got all my plants growing. They're looking really good. They're gonna go in the ground probably 
um, either this week or next weekend whenever we get out of these 40 degree low temperatures. Um, let's look at some more yards. This is one of my worst spots. You can see um, I get a lot of die off here. Um, I get a lot of summertime shade from the side of the house right here. Um, and these, I hate this stupid thing, and these oak trees um, I had limbed up. So hopefully you can get an idea. I did take out six huge trees, um, three of which were back here where the garden is. And the other ones were back here where you see the bare spot. There's a fire pit. Had a huge oak tree right here and another one right behind this little guy here next to the shovel and another one behind it. And that's really going to help out with uh, some of the shade problems and uh, moisture content in the soil where these great big trees are just sucking up this water. If you look real close... In the very back, you can see my uh, plugs that I'm growing in trays right now. I'll save that one for another day.